My name is Kukule Tutele and I'm traveling the African continent in search of up and coming entrepreneurs who are making an impact in their own communities. This is profit with purpose. This is what giving back is all about. This is Shivas. Win the right way. African Sunsets Events, Marketing and Promotions is a Zambian business established in 2013 by Abigail Mbuzi, a 35-year-old single mother of three boys. The focus of African Sunsets Events at present is the reality show Master Cook Zambia, Brand Woman and Brand Man. I recently sat down with Abigail to discuss her life, loves and how there's no business quite like show business. Such a pleasure to meet you in person and congratulations on uh, also being a phenomenal entrepreneur who's actually celebrating and uh, also as a forerunner with regard to shared success and paying it forward. But before we get any further, Abby, let's actually start off by understanding who African Sunsets is and what it is that you do. African Sunsets started in 2013. Um, basically, uh, it started as a catering company and then kind of grew into doing larger events, corporate events. Um, from there uh, we got doing um, a, a master cook TV show which is like our flagship um, into getting into production. Other than the master cook show we also have um, a conference that we call brand, it started off first as just brand woman and now we have brand woman and brand man. What saw you transition from being a woman in the corporate space to actually deciding to get a little bit more hands on and become an entrepreneur? I worked in full for PwC for about seven years and I think at some point uh, you know, after all the number crunching, you say to yourself, is this all there is, you know, I, I'd like to try out something new and I'd like to say I'm a serial entrepreneur because I started doing all sorts of little businesses here and there on the side, trying to decide what it was exactly that I wanted to do. Um, I actually even had a mobile butchery <laughs> at some point and then got into the catering. That's how African Sunset started. I catered for a couple of weddings and kitchen parties but it was too exhausting to do um, full-time working as an accountant and do the catering as well because I was doing like most of the cooking myself. I didn't, you know when you have a new business you don't trust anybody else. Exactly. You want to do everything on your own so it was uh, exhausting to say the least and I had three young children at the time so I was really wearing myself thin. So how did you do it as a woman with all the security in the corporate space, leaving that aside with a beautiful German car, a wonderful home, <laughs> and then deciding to actually go be brave and um, explore the world of entrepreneurship? You know, sometimes they say, you know, they say um, your destiny, things begin to unfold in your life to lead you to your destiny. I had no plan, not that I had a plan, I had completely no plan at all. Mm -hmm. I was in a lot of debt and I, I'd recently become a single mother and I didn't even know where I was gonna pay, how I was going to pay school fees for my kids but I knew that working wasn't working for me and I had to come up with a plan. So basically I decided to take a break for a little bit. Um, I had to make lots of decisions, tough decisions, just to, to make us go forward, like moving out of the house I was living in, selling my car, moving my kids from expensive private schools and moving into my parents' house. Yeah. Um, it was hard, of course it was hard, you know, you have to cut yourself off from friends because they make you feel like, are you crazy? Mm. What is wrong with you? What are you doing? Just get back and get a job. Why do you want to live like this? But in my head I had a plan, I hadn't formulated it all like 100%, but it was, I was going somewhere with it. So I took a trip to, to South Africa. While I was there, I read a book um, by Timothy Maurice Webster. And I the was branding like, expert. Yes, the branding expert. And I was really intrigued about, about uh, with the book that I read. One day I sent him a message and said, um, I'm from Lusaka and I'd like to meet you. Are you in Joburg by any chance? And he says, yeah, if you can come meet me in 30 minutes, I'm at Nelson Mandela Square. So I quickly got onto a taxi and went to meet him. This is somebody I, who has inspired me so much. Like I feel like I can go back to Zambia and be president or something. So I didn't want to have that feeling by myself. I wanted to share with my friends, my yeah. family. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to afford his fees by myself just to buy him an air ticket and say, can you come talk to my friends? Mm. So that's the, how the whole idea of the conference for Brand Woman started. So I got back to Zambia and 
my parents were like, so you're back to look for a job, right? And I was like, no, I'm on to something, there's something I'm going to do. And I didn't even want to tell anybody what I was doing. So remember, I didn't even have a car. So I was going around with public transport, doing letters, going to um, different corporate organizations, asking them to sponsor, asking them to buy tickets. It was our first conference and we had like 150 women who came to attend. And even all the speakers, every time they'd walk in, they were like, wow, this is a great turnout. Talk to us about how being an entrepreneur who wants to share their experience with others uh, in their circle actually contributes to your success so much more. I'm one of those people who love to share my story. I like people to know that, you know what, you don't have to be Harvard educated, you don't have to have five million dollars in your bank account for you to say I'm going to set up, start, start uh, a business. Um, I want to tell people, you know what, I'm just like you. My favorite book is The Alchemist and uh, I, I reread it like every time I think I'm going through a funk, I'll pick up the book and read it. And it talks about um, when you start pursuing your dreams, the whole of the universe will conspire to ensure that you get to achieve what it is you're trying to achieve and I have seen that so, so much. Every time I just make a decision and say, this is what I want to do. I may not have the money for it, but something comes, people come, money comes. Let's talk about that further because as we know, your company started in 2013, uh -huh. as you alluded to, but it hasn't been a very easy climate, especially within the Zambian mm -hmm. economy where mm -hmm. copper prices took a bit of a dip just over two years ago. Uh, the economy was also struggling with high levels of inflation, limited cash flow. For you as an entrepreneur, how do you deal with some of these uh, headwinds that you have to face on uh, head on? Or unless the alchemist uh, <laughs> works to your benefit in that regard? Uh, well, yes, one, the, well, the alchemist, the universe conspires, um, but we do have challenges. There are times when, um, for example, we have sponsors who will say we're going to do this and, you know, we pro they promise so much and then just a week or two before the, the event or whatever, then they have to pull out because their, their cash flows have been affected and things like that. So we have faced a lot of that. But then with us, we always say the show must go on because mm -hmm. we can't promise the whole of Zambia that we're going to have this event and then it doesn't happen because of a few things here and there going on behind the scenes. So there are times when I've had to use my own money, my own resources, my friends' resources to just get things going and say, you know what, let's just go ahead. Things will get better next year. Things will get better the year after. After working in the corporate world, I don't like office. I feel you know, I like I like to be I like to do my thing, set up my laptop if I need to be in a restaurant, uh -huh. different places where we're filming, at home I just have my laptop and phone. So but we recently took up um, an, um, an events place which we're turning into a restaurant. Um, of course being having a restaurant has always been my number one dream. As a so, foodie, right? Yes, as a foodie. But and as I said, the universe always will give you what you ask of it. This is a place that we are using at the moment for all of our events. Um, we are building up to setting up the restaurant, um, but for starters, we have started with doing outdoor events here, um, mainly like kitchen parties, weddings, um, parties, birthday parties, pool parties. How important is it to, uh, uh, again, collaborate uh, in order to have a successful event and run a successful company? I understand that you had to partner with a few individuals to actually acquire this property. Yes, um, this, this property is actually owned by a friend of mine. Um, so he, 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 he came up with this idea and said, I, at the, there was a time I started running a restaurant um, at a hotel. Um, I was basically doing African food there, um, just trying to get into uh, Zambian food and making Zambian food something people can go out to, to, to have a meal for. Um, but unfortunately, as I started running that restaurant, um, the owners decided that they needed to sell the place, so I had to move. So I was heartbroken about it because being, owning a restaurant has always been my dream. Um, so luckily my friend came along and said, hey, you know what, I've got a place, why don't you come and see what we can do um, at the place and probably you could build up to it being a restaurant. So I said, great, we're starting off first doing pop-up restaurants every weekend, where every weekend we have decided to make it a platform for um, contestants from our show and different chefs, talented chefs around the country to come and have a weekend where they can showcase a menu and have people come and buy tickets and we'll do the advertising and marketing for them and people get to come and taste their food.
you are known as being as a foodie here in Zambia and today you're going to help us prepare a typical Zambian dish. Yes, of course I can't bring you all the way to Zambia and not to serve you Zambian food. So what are we making? <laughs> so um, I will bring, these, are, these are actually a Zambian delicacy. This is caterpillar but locally called vinkovala. Vinkovala, can I yes. touch them? Yes, you can. And obviously so, this has what, protein benefits? Yeah, this is, this is, this is high in protein. It's like, it's like a steak. It's like a uh -huh. steak, just yeah. cut up. So you can eat it as a snack or you can eat it with... So you can eat it like that? No, after it's cooked. Okay. It's raw. <laughs> okay. Or you can eat it with tanshima. Tanshima is? Tanshima is like your sadza. Sadza, so... Yes, um, uh -huh. except ours is a little bit thicker, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in South Africa, that would be referred to as pap, or yeah, basically pap, like yes. some kind of uh -huh. corn, uh -huh. ground yes. maize meal. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then we also have kapenta, which is um, little fish. These are dried. You can actually have them fresh as well. And then we are um, cooking, um, this is a local vegetable. It's uh, pumpkin leaves. In, in the local language, we call it chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yes. Okay. Um, we have a lot of vegetables here in Zambia, lots of local vegetables, but I chose this because it's one of my favorites. Oh, you like it? Yes. Uh -huh. And the typical so flavor, because I'm thinking, is it um, similar to spinach, is it? Um, yes, I guess it's somewhere between spinach and kale, and we're going to cook it in, in peanut sauce. In peanut sauce? Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. What kind of oh, peanuts that have been ground? As in ground nuts, yeah. So ground nuts that have been pounded and yeah. Where do we start? Okay, so we're going to start with the caterpillars because um, we need to soak them in hot water. These are uh, a quite reasonably priced ingredients. So, so we're going to leave this okay. soaking in the water. Then I think we'll move on to the vegetables. Um, so with these vegetables, they come with a, a little like film on them. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of peel off the film. After peeling off the film, then you, you cut it up into smaller pieces. In cookery, there's always something to learn. You can't know it all. Yeah. yeah. So I, I started calling like uh, chef friends to come over and teach me different cuisines. Or like I'd go and buy something that, for example, I'd go and buy squid and call a chef and say, how do I cook this? You know, because it's not just about picking it up and putting it in the pot. There's a certain way you have to clean it. There's a certain way you have to prepare it. So I, uh, it started from there. And of course, like I always say, having the cooking classes and learning by myself, I felt like I was being selfish and needed to share. So that's how I, meant, I started getting my friends to come for cooking classes. And in, it turned into a commercial venture. Now we said, why don't we start the kids' cooking classes? Oh. And for me, that has been the most fulfilling work I've ever done. It's not like work at all. We have the kids talking to us about food and telling us what they think about food. And obviously, just seeing um, food and stuff in, through the kids' eyes is amazing. What have been some of the influences that allowed you to become a foodie? You mentioned your mother. And yeah, my uh, mother and my grandmother. Um, my mom loved to cook as well. If I, actually, if I tell the story, um, when my parents were married, that's when my dad decided to, be, to, to go to school. So he was a student most of my childhood. That's how come we ended up in the UK. So when um, my dad, we had to come back to Zambia and my dad remained to finish off his masters. Um, my mom became the primary breadwinner. And so at the time she started a catering business. And that's what she, through the catering business, that's how she used to pay for our school fees and all of that. What can I help with? Okay, so maybe you can continue cutting vegetables. Okay. And I can move on, as we're waiting for the caterpillars to soak, I guess I can move on to starting to cook the capenta. And when it comes to, to, to the typical stereotype that you have to deal with, how do you uh, try to manage uh, some of the negative responses that you get? Um, I think the funny thing is you'd be surprised that there are not very many women in a professional kitchen. Um, like later on we're going to go and meet Jessie who is one of the few female professionals um, that, that own their own restaurants and actually cook in the kitchen themselves. I think it's a very high paced, very uh, a, a, a career that's a lot of, that has a lot of pressure. Um, and even in our competition we always fail to find female professionals to take part in the competition. Mm. I think there's still so much of a glass ceiling that they're trying to break through. Even in cooking? Even in, even in cooking. Put which you, huh? Imagine, imagine.
Uh, this is Dolce by Jesse. Um, Jesse was our has so far been our only female professional um, contestant in the show. Um, you know, with the competition has professionals and amateurs taking part at the same time. So she's been the only female professional chef brave enough to take part, and she is amazingly talented. She. Um, she's a self-taught chef. She hasn't been to chef school, and this uh, this is all of the, the the that all that we embody in the master cook competition. It's about searching out people that are so talented and showing them to the world. What has the impact and influence of master cook and your participation been like? Oh well, it was an amazing journey. Seriously, I got to meet a lot of people. At the time that I met Abby and uh, she introduced me to master cook. I was just setting up my business. I was about three, four months into it, so I really got to meet a lot of people on the show, and people were generally supportive, you know? So it's been really nice, and it, of course, spread the good word about me, because at the time I was still looking for some exposure. Talk to us about that particular experience where Abby, uh, as an entrepreneur and founding uh, Master Cook, has actually also helped to empower you and you know share success with a fellow entrepreneur like yourself uh, through the establishment of your restaurants going forward. In other words, how do you also hope to pay this forward? You know, in making sure that you plow back to the community through the growth and the development of your entrepreneurial skills. Um, I've always actually plowed back into the community as I employ uh, not exactly college graduates and whatnot but just people that have a passion i'm self-taught um, if you didn't know and i believe in empowering others so i train my stuff from scratch i don't have to say you don't have the papers because once upon a time i also wanted that opportunity and because i didn't have the right papers i didn't i didn't get the job so i've learned to always give somebody a chance out there and it just turns out that my group is really nice i have a really nice team and they're always willing to learn and right now they are some of the best cooks in town or because I've told them I've given them a chance. Um, with Abby, well, she's, I like who she is. She, she really is for women empowerment and I love that she's always spoken a positive word about me, about my business and things like that. Would you consider yourself successful right now? Yeah, I would. I would, considering where I have come from, you know. I started my business just, well, I didn't actually think I would be a restaurant owner and not, not like at this tender age. And given that you're a woman, you're part of the circle which uh, shares ideas and interchanges, what would you uh, say are some of your secrets to success uh, given how far you've come already? Consistency. <laughs> Consistency. There's so much entrepreneurship going on in, 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 in Zambia and it's nice to see especially women in culinary um, getting bigger and better in, in the things that they're doing. And that also speaks to uh, the business opportunities mm -hmm. that exist in doing business the Shivers way, winning yeah. the right way mm -hmm. and paying it forward. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel though, knowing that you've established a company, you've established Master Cook, uh, and now providing opportunities for other entrepreneurs to thrive and grow their businesses in Lusaka? It, I mean, that's what it's all about. I think that there's more um, benefit in that than in the actual financial benefit of it because it's so nice to see um, other, other things grow, even that's what brand women and brand man is about. I mean, we also had uh, Jessica come to, to be a speaker at Brand Woman last year. And this is, we also wanted her to talk about her journey and everything that has happened with um, her business and how she's, she's grown it up to this point. For any entrepreneurs who might be looking at you and amazed by the journey that you've traveled, what would you say your secret source or secret advice might be for them to reach a similar level of success that you've attained? Um, I think for me the number one thing is persistence. I mean, um, everybody has a good idea that they're sitting on and you have to go, go out there and get started. You can sit and plan and try out a thousand ways in your head about how to do something, but it won't get done unless you actually get up and do it. And most times you learn from your mistakes. You make a few mistakes here and there, and as you go on, you begin to correct and perfect your business model until you get to the perfect model that works for your business. And once you've done that, you just need to be persistent. You still may face challenges. 
but even if you're knocked down you get back on the horse and keep going mm -hmm. yeah. many might say that you obviously need to get into it to make a profit but what have uh, some of the alternative return on investments been for you like for me like I always say that the, the teaching of the kids cooking classes um, we now have this um, cooking with a cause that we're starting this year um, which is a charity event where we get different corporates to come and do, um, have a cook off um, so each, each uh, different corporation sends um, their management team and they have to cook as a team for our celebrity judges, the judges from the show. And our judges pick um, the best teams and the winning team wins um, the cash that we have in the pot and they get to don donate it to a charity of their choice. So um, it's not just about making money but finding ways unique ways you know it's always it's hard to go to corporates and say can you give us some money mm -hmm. because we want to take to this charity but if you can get corporates to work together in a fun and entertaining way uh, just finding ways to give back to the community at large how do you hope to uh, make this broader and really have a pan-african impact over the past few months i've been traveling around the, the southern african east african region um, trying to make contacts and see how best i could get into those markets and i think one once we have aired this season's um, uh, Master Cook, our season two show, um, we're looking at this year. We're hoping we, we're, we're getting a broader audience, which is a, the, an Africa-wide audience. Do you believe, as an entrepreneur, that it's quite critical for Africans to continue to give back, and you know, instead of us looking elsewhere for foreign direct investment, perhaps start with ourselves to continue winning the right way? I always think so, um, and I think even with the Master Cook show. As we go Pan-African, the whole point is to focus mainly on um, local traditional food in each of the countries. I think there are a thousand cooking shows on TV, but we're not really talking about African food and the benefits of the African food and how there are different traditions surrounding African food. You're a mother, you're a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. It almost seems as though you have additional superpowers. <laughs> how do you do it all? No, I wish I did have some superpowers. <laughs> um, I have a strong support system. That always helps. Um, my ex-husband helps a lot with the kids, um, so that we, we still co-parent even though we're not together anymore. And um, with the business side of things, I have a strong team. Um, you know, at some point you need to know what your personal strengths are and the strengths of others and how they can help you where you lack. With regard to winning the right way, the Shivers way, mm -hmm. how do you hope your future generations and the kids' school uh, and other entrepreneurs have, that you've uh, touched I will continue to do that. One thing I love about this business is it's not like we go out to work. We have a lot of fun doing what we do. And uh, I mean, we're in the events business, so we go to a lot of parties, we drink a lot of whiskey. <laughs> so um, I would like future generations not just to take away, like we had said earlier, the food being the food for eating and the food in the mindset change, but also the fact that you can have fun doing what you're doing. It is not always about making money and just being, oh, we have to make money, we have to make money. Have fun along the way, on the journey. I'd like to say I'm a storyteller. Yeah. yeah, so telling stories in different ways, through TV shows, through conferences, through events. It's all about telling stories. As the executive producer of Master Cook, mm -hmm. uh, you have had to deal with script writing, with marketing, project management, the accounting and the finances, editing included. Mm -hmm. This is all just a list of some of the talents and skills that you're able to display. But how easy is it to do that, where you have your fingers in many pies, but still have to oversee the, the, the overall process? You know, um, I always say running a business is like having a baby. You cannot give that responsibility to anybody else. And the whole point is you need to to know every single corner of your business and I had to learn as I went along and at some point I said to myself you know what I don't want anybody to lie to me I want to be able to know from A to Z what goes into this we would sit and with the editing guys to edit the show up to like from 17 hours to 6 in the morning to wow. sit through and go through footage so I know every single corner I know when somebody tells me we have to do this footage and this is how much I'm going to charge you I know exactly what work is involved in it I've actually even said to myself that maybe next year I want to even go and learn how to do photography so that I can be filming myself oh wow <laughs> <laughs> a woman of many talents and obviously exploring more opportunities mm -hmm. talk to us again about the um, future success that you hope to attain within uh, African sunsets and how that speaks to the type of talent that you look to recruit uh, mm -hmm. and the difference that you want to make in your society. For me, I always talk about um, 
generational blessings and you know things that should 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 be around long after I'm gone and you know living a legacy for my sons even if I let me be the woman who left her sons a legacy and um, it's not about I think we need to get out of a Zambian sometimes it can be very local in our thinking and just thinking about the local context and for me I'm always forward thinking I have a 10 20 year plan with the mm. business and I know that it's not just within the, the, the boundaries of Zambia. I want to go across to other neighboring countries across Africa. And um, with the Master Cook show, with the Brand Woman, Brand Man conference, I mean, like for example, the whole point of the conference is to inspire a whole generation of, a new generation of African leaders, whether in business, in politics, in music, whatever it is that anybody's doing. We're talking about how to brand yourself. I want to brand Africa in a different light. As Africans, we have a lot to offer. We have a lot of talent. Food was the first thing because I, I'm a foodie. I love food and I love to cook. So it starts from there. Follow your passions and then everything else <laughs> kind of follows. Exactly. Uh -huh. Would you consider yourself to be successful? No. I wow. never want to think in my head that I've arrived because there's so, so, so much that I still want to do. Mm. Yeah. And so, with doing more, how do you hope to continue winning the right way? Um, like I always say, it's not about me. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than African sunsets. It's about the community at large. Brand woman, brand man is about changing mindsets, which is the number one thing that we need to do. Changing the mindsets of people around. Master Cook has gone into doing the cooking classes and we have, we're teaching children how to cook, we're talking about local food, we're talking about food and nutrition, we're teaching kids where food comes from and things like that. So all of that is about changing mindsets and that's what I want to share with the world. So 20 years from now, mm -hmm. where digital has gone on to a new age, where thinking has changed, what contribution do you hope uh, that uh, you would have made to society and how people will remember you? I hope that people remember that I was a champion of good food. <laughs> champion of good food. Not only food for the mind, but food for the tummy yes. as well. <laughs> on that note though, Abby, we'd like to uh, salute you and congratulate you for your efforts and Thank say onwards you. and upwards and wishing you nothing but the best. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>